Hello and welcome to the D2 Incorporated video on how to determine fuel contamination by light transmission method for ASTM D2276 and D5452 ASTM Gravimetric Laboratory and Line Sampling. The particulates requirement for fuel contamination is as follows. ASTM D1655 report only. U.S. Navy has a 2.0 milligrams per liter release. U.S. Army has a 1.0 milligrams per liter release. The U.S. Air Force has a 0.5 milligrams per liter release. And DEF Standard 9191 has a 1.0 milligrams per liter at point of manufacturing. IATA has a 0.5 milligrams per liter and Boeing recommends less than 0.5 milligrams per liter. D2 Incorporated utilizes the light transmission method, LTM, for determining the contamination of fuels. Standards are placed in the detector and straight line calibration is performed. Two filters are placed back to back and the test fuel is drawn through both, the same as the gravimetric process. The top filter is stained by the fuel and collects particulate that's greater than 0.65 micrometers. The bottom filter is only stained by the fuel. Broadband light is shown through each test pad and the current created by a large format photodiode is measured. The difference recorded. The pad light difference is used to determine contamination level opposed to weight. Already employed in the field is the JFWA-1 HydroLight, which is used for determining free water in aviation kerosene. As you can see here on the screen, we plan to modify the free water device to incorporate the light transmission method. To do this, all we have to do is add a large format optic detector below pad to facilitate the light transmission method. Instrument retains its free water measurement capability. Shuttles have indicators that tell the instrument which method is being performed using magnetics. So fortunately, due to the design of the JFWA-1 Hydrolite, it is a very easy modification to add the LTM capability within the existing frame of the unit, keeping the unit extremely small at only 4 inches by 4 inches on a desktop. In similar form to what we did with the JFWA-1 for measuring free water and developing a standardization shuttle for verification and field calibration, we've also developed a standardization shuttle for the particulate side of the device for the light transmission method part of the instrument. The particulate standard shuttle uses two each fixed transparency optic plates which yield a measured milligrams per liter equivalent. Optic plates are mounted in a common shuttle with a slide movement as you can see on the right. Value assigned to optic difference can be directly set to accommodate different sample volumes and filter disk sizes. The slide goes in and out and it's a magnetic slide which is how the device knows if the slide is in or out. The standardization process takes about 10 seconds the standardization must be run before the first use of the LTM instrument. A large amount of testing has already been done to summarize what has been done already. In fall of 2016, Rugness Trials, D2 Incorporated tested three instruments, Abcount Light Particle Counter, ASTM Working Group was established. In July of 2017, the Pax River Naval Station ran eight prepared samples, zero to 10 milligrams per liter, 90% fine test dust, 10% red oxide, three each light transmission method devices, the Navy CCFD device, the Avcount light, and the gravimetric post processed. Navy protocol sampling 800 milliliter sample, 47 milliliter test pad. And then in August 2017, Southwest Research Institute U.S. Army Tardex sponsored fuel filter test stand, 34 samples test dust, 5 samples 100% red oxide stain, 9 light transmission method devices, multiple laser particle counters, Stanhope Seda, Parker Hannafin, P1 
Panamax um, and the samples were 0 to 2.5 milligrams per liter. Army protocol sampling 4 liter sample 37 millimeter test pad. So this is the amount of testing that has been done on the light transmission method thus far and there's more testing scheduled for the near future but we have a large amount of data already to suggest that the light transmission method is extremely accurate. The Pax River Naval Station test July 2017 preparation included 800 milliliter filtered treated jet placed in a sample bottle Arizona ultrafine A1 test dust with 10% red iron oxide added by weight Sample impulse mixer stirred for 10 seconds. 800 milliliter sample pulled through dual filters using millipore filter holder in the CCFD vacuum pump system. Equivalent sample prepared for laser particle counter sample. And on the right, you can see the specially designed millipore filter holder that D2 Incorporated has created for this test. On this graph, you can see the data from the Naval Pax River test. You can see the light transmission method versus the prepared value, which gave us a R squared number of 0.9899. And as you can see from the graph, it was very accurate in determining the amount of particulate compared to the prepared value. When you compare the data from the LTM method to the gravimetric method, it determines a R squared value of 0.9674, which is significantly lower than the R squared value for the LTM method. And as you can see, um, some of the data points are significantly further off of the prepared value um, line. If we take the data from the gravimetric method, which is the industry used method at the time, and compare it to the LTM method, we can see that the R squared is 0.9897 showing that the LTM method is basically giving you the exact same information as the gravimetric method just slightly more accurately. The next test was performed in August of 2017 at Southwest Research Institute and pictured here you can see the jet fuel test stand that was used to perform the test. During this test, they used nine LTM method devices, as you can see lined up here on the lab bench. Uh, the Southwest Research Institute protocol line sampling. They used a controlled slurry of A1 or A2 or A3 dust introduced to produce 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 1.0, 2.0, and 2.5 milligram per liter samples. The Southwest Research Gravimetric ASTM D5452 was also used to compare. Samples drawn using 37 mm filter, 4 liter typical lesser volumes used to generate more data span. The Southwest Research Institute sampling was done with traditional 37 mm millipore pad holder, directly sampled from the SWRI pipeline at a sample size of 4 liters. Lesser volumes were used to expand the data set. Millipore holder placed in GTP sampler. Final sample count was 23 samples. This graph here is the light transmission method versus the Southwest Research Institute computed value. So as you can see here, this is um, a R squared of 0.9659 and the data is right along the uh, y-axis there. So it's a very accurate uh, representation of the SWRI computed value. Um, it's very, very close to the line, as you can see from this data set here. This graph right here is extremely important. This is the ASTM D2PP R and R, and it shows that unlike the other two methods, that our instrument is not affected by the value, it's affected by the method itself. As you can see here, the value of milligrams increases along the x-axis, and the value off of the measurement is on the y-axis. So the higher the line goes, the more inaccurate it is on this chart. The LTM method is the bottom line um, that overlaps each other because they're so close together with an R and R of 0 0.084, 0 0.084 and 0 0.085 
Um, you can see it stays very close to the bottom, showing that is extremely accurate, especially in comparison to the other two methods. The other two methods, as the um, volume increases, they get less and less accurate. So it's just an important graph to show just how accurate the light transmission method is in comparison to ASTM D5452 and ASTM D2274 according to the data collected by Southwest Research Institute. So what are the light transmission method limitations to precision? The pad fuel sampling is a huge limitation because collecting the pad um, and sampling it properly is one of the hardest parts and there's a lot of human error involved in that process. The instrumentation does not look to limit precision. Limitations are sampling and proper distribution of particulate on the filters. If the pads are dry, then they must be re-wet in fuel. The re-wetting has the potential to wash particulates off if not done with care. Operator handling of pads while separating, dirt falls off, touching, etc. So basically, the largest limitations to precision is the preparation of the sample pads, which is the exact same limitations to precision that all the other test methods already have, as they all use the same sample pads. So what are the sampling pad holder needs? The 37 millimeter millipore holder is okay for gravimetric, but needs better flow properties for optics. The 47 millimeter funnel different issue edge over distributed due to slow low vacuum so the problem with the 47 millimeter pad is it just doesn't have enough flow for a vacuum pump despite these issues with the existing filter holder slash sampling ltm performance is an improvement over gravimetric so sampling issues are improved the ltm precision will improve further over time as well so in summation, the LTM eliminates more of the problems with sampling than the other methods because it's more precise. So the summary to these interlaboratory studies in this data is we have requested for ballot. In summation, we motion to ballot a proposed version of D2276 and D5452, which include language incorporating the light transmission method into these methods supported by the research report, which includes the data from both the Pax River study, the second ruggedness trial, and the SWR trials single site interlaboratory study. Also, we are currently doing more testing at the Navy Pax River facility to move forward with the ASTM process with more data. We'll be coming into the industry in the very near future. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to answer those. Please leave them below in the comment section. And you can find D2 Incorporated at www.d-2.com and on Facebook as D2 Incorporated. Thank you so much for watching our fuel contamination by light transmission method for ASTM D2276 and D5452 versus the ASTM gravimetric laboratory and line sampling methods. D2 Incorporated would like to thank you again for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And we'll be back soon with another informative video, so please stay tuned. Have a nice day everyone.